Hey guys, Enzo from Home Theater Engineering here with Andrew. Hi folks. Uh, we're here to talk about a little bit about projectors, screens, uh, choosing the right one for the right room, getting the right amount of light on the screen. Uh, there's a bit of uh, you know different opinions and different rules with this. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Andrew because he is the resident expert when it comes to calibrations and all things projectors. So Andrew, take it away. We'll do a bit of Q&A. Uh, as a bit of a novice, I guess I'll have some questions that probably people have on the forums. Uh, and I guess the most obvious thing is getting the right size of screen because everyone's very quick to shoot from the hip and kind of go, you need the biggest, sure. bigger screen, yeah. bigger screen. Okay, so, well, first of all, this is our, just so that people understand, and b before you start commenting, this is our um, sort of uh, workshop room. So we're always changing projectors, changing screens, changing amps, and so if something doesn't fit the screen at the moment, that's not what we're talking about. So before you go, the image isn't right, or this isn't right, that's not what we're here to talk about, and that's not what we're working on right now, but I just thought I'd, I'd let you know. So, uh, yeah, we're always changing gear and hicks, we're always testing. Okay, so as Enzo said, um, we see a lot of comments in forums and chat rooms and things like that where people sort of say, what size screen should I put in my room? And often the overwhelming reaction is, biggest you can get, go big bro, it's like massive, go massive. And that's all well and good and that's, that's a nice ideal to shoot for, but there are a few things to realise. Um, and I often equate uh, projectors to a tin of paint. If you need a certain amount of paint, to cover your screen, then um, there's no getting around that. If you go to a bigger screen and you've got the same amount of paint, it's not gonna cover your screen. What this relates to is light output. Now, for those of you who don't know this, the minimum light output for Blu-ray, which is Rec. 709 color space, um, that is the color space that applies to free-to-air TV, Blu-rays and things like that, the minimum light you need in your room to really make that work is 14 foot Lamberts. You can go higher than that, but 14 foot Lamberts is what you need to at least have enough decent dynamic range and light output so that your images look great. So the thing is, if a, a 100 inch screen is ideal for that, then going to a bigger screen means that you spread your light out, it means that you don't get the light on the screen that you need, you don't have the dynamic range, which means that the distance between your blacks and your whites is not as great, and so your image basically looks very flat, and um, certainly doesn't pop off the screen. Um, now we're fans of big screens, make no mistake. We're working on projects at the moment, for example, with very big screens, and some of them, you know, in excess of sort of eight, nine meters. And for these, we're specifying projectors that have uh, up to 6,000 lumens of light output. Um, but these can be expensive, or if you go for a high lumen output projector, um, and some people sort of say, well, why don't you go for like an office type projector? The thing is they, don't, they lack the color space and also sometimes the resolution's different. Um, so it's all well and good to turn around and say, hey, listen, go for a big screen. But if you go for a big screen, that changes everything. That changes the viewing distance and the angles that you're seeing the screen at. It changes the amount of light on the screen. It changes the dynamic range. It changes a whole lot of things in your room that you have to take into consideration. We've seen projects where the screens are so big that the projector now can't actually fill a screen and the, the picture's too small. And they, they either have to knock a wall out or go out through the wall with the projector to get it to fit. So it's all well and good to say, go big, but you just have to understand the consequences of going big. And especially if you're on a forum, be kind to people because often, unless you know size of their room, number of seats, seating distance, projector model and light output, type of screen that it is, sort of content they watch, and so on and so forth, we don't have the answers to those questions. If someone said to me, what size screen do you want? I'd say, well, I don't know. I need to know all these things. What sort of projector are you looking at buying or have you already got? How far from the screen do you sit? How many people in your room? Um, the gain it, of the screen? The gain of the screen is also really mm. important. You know, there are a lot of different types of screen around. Is it is it a standard flat screen? Is it micro perforated? Is it a woven screen? All of these things make a massive difference to the amount of light that you're seeing from your image. And if you just go big, then there's a good chance you're going to be particularly underwhelmed. These days, especially with high dynamic range, you really want to be looking for about 
40 foot lamberts um, on the screen um, and for that you need a screen the right size, the right material, with the right projector at the right distance. So yes, when we're designing a room we turn around and say, well look a big screen's great, but what is big in your room? How big is your room? How big can the screen be? There are other factors as well. If you go with a really big screen, what you end up doing is often, especially if you go for example like a 16 by 9 screen, you're pushing your screen up closer to the roof and closer to the floor. And if you go out to the sides, you're pushing it close to the wall. Well, unless you have a black absorbent room, then you're actually pumping more light into the room as well. So you're getting reflections off the side, you're getting reflections off the ceiling, which is increasing the amount of ambient light in the room, which is washing out your image. And in fact, at a recent ISF course where I was working, um, there was discussions about the fact that with a projector, we may never actually exceed a certain number of foot lamberts in a room ever, because the problem is the more we put on the screen, the more it ends up back in the room, the more it washes out the screen. So there, there is likely to be a break-even point where, in fact, um, that's problematic. So that's why in our rooms we use absorbent uh, material or paints to try and stop too much of this light bouncing back. And even in this room, on this side wall here, this side wall is quite well lit up, even with the black, and so we're trying to keep as much light off the screen. But if you put a massive 16 by 9 screen right up against the walls in a room and right up against the ceiling, then you're actually going to wash your own image out. All right, so these are the things to consider. So next time you see a post on the internet and someone's saying, what size screen should I put in my room? The first question should be, tell me about your room. Tell me about what you watch. Tell me about you know, where you're going with this project. And these are the questions that should be asked. And then, and only then, really, can we answer that question. Just saying go big, that's not really an answer at all. Okay, so um, Enzo, any questions on this? No, I think that comment's fair even when you walk into a store. You know, if those stores aren't asking you those questions, I'd be very concerned. Mm. And I think ultimately, you know, there are a lot of people out there with projectors that aren't even doing what they should be doing. No, no, that's that's really true. I've, you know, obviously as a calibrator, I go out and visit a lot of rooms, and it's not uncommon for me to see seven, eight, or nine foot lamberts on a screen, and a really sad and disappointing image, because they've gone so big. And what a lot of people don't realise is, there aren't a lot of projectors around that actually pump out the light output that you need for a significantly big screen. Um, so whilst I will always be the fan of a big screen, that's why we love the movies, after all, I am cautious because I would like to find that compromise, and that's what every home cinema is. It's a balance of compromises where it delivers the very best picture we can get um, with the most impact, most dynamic range, the most accurate colour in the room that works so very well. Um, so going big is just one part of a fairly complex formula. All right. Uh, Anything else? I think the HDR is a really touchy subject at the moment. Yep. A lot of people are struggling to even... Well, they've got HDR content, obviously. Mm. But to do HDR, you need how many foot lamberts, really? Well, you, ideally, you're looking at 40 foot lamberts. Exactly. Now, we, we certainly get very good results with less than that. But if you really want that punch, uh, then you're looking at 40 foot lamberts. And that's actually not that easy to achieve. It's not, no. Um, and so, even the zooming factor, you know, we get a lot of people, and I've done it in here to show you. You can see on the screen, we've actually zoomed this projector. Mm. The problem with zooming, using, you know, zoom on a lot of projectors is obviously you're losing uh, the pixels, mm -hmm. and it's, what, 33%? So you're not Roughly, actually watching yeah, yeah. 4K content. Yeah. And I think a lot of people need to make a decision, you know, if they want 100%, and people buying a native 4K projector, mm. you know, they're not actually watching 4K. Mm. And a lot of people don't realise that. So, you know, uh, anamorphic lens is another thing that obviously you can factor in. There are a whole lot of topics yeah. here. Um, but certainly, yeah, if you uh, are using the zoom function on your uh, projector, then just be aware that, you know, and you can see that happening right now, right here at the moment. Um, we can see some bleed off the top and bottom because this is actually uh, a 16 by 9 um, uh, material. It's a 16 by 9 film. Um, and we're running that on an anamorphic screen with no, we're not running a lens at the moment, um, but you can see it splashing off. Now, if this was an anamorphic movie, nothing really changes, um, but uh, this gets blanked out and that gets blanked out, and they, these pixels up here and the light up here is just not being used. 
so we do lose light output and that's why we are also super big fans of an anamorphic lens probably off topic for today unless it comes to trying to get that light output in your room if you want a really big screen in your room and you like you know if you're a widescreen fan then absolutely matching um, a bigger screen with an anamorphic lens increases your light output lets you go that extra distance okay so you increase the light output yes now you can step up to a slightly bigger screen so as always please you know if you found this useful please subscribe um, to our YouTube channel ring the bell and comment you know it's always great to hear you know what we've perhaps missed out on or what you'd like to hear more about and and how we can help you in in building designing and calibrating your home theater all right thanks for joining us thanks guys